हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल लर्न गॉस सीडल मेथड टू सॉल्व सिस्टम ऑफ लीनियर इक्वेशंस दिस इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ आवर प्रीवियस क्लास वेर वी डिराइव फाइनल डिफरेंस मेथड बेस्ड इक्वेशंस टू सॉल्व टेम्परेचर ऑफ एनी इंटरमीडिएट नोट टी आई जे वंस वी हैव सेट ऑफ सच इक्वेशंस देन वी नीड टू नो सम न्यूमेरिकल टेक्निक्स टू सॉल्व सच इक्वेशंस गॉस सीडल मेथड इज वन ऑफ देम इन ऑर्डर टू हैव बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस मेथड we will solve one example of steady state heat conduction in two dimensional plate this particular problem comes under the category of elliptic equations which we discussed in our previous class let us consider a two dimensional plate of size 2.4 meter by 3 meter subjected to boundary condition shown below the right end of the plate is maintained at 100 degree celsius and the left end is maintained at 75 degree celsius The top end is at 300 degree Celsius, whereas the bottom boundary is maintained at 50 degree Celsius. It has been asked to find temperature of the intermediate domain nodes using suitable grid size. That is, first we have to divide the domain into number of grid points. The temperature of the nodes represented using black color will be determined using the temperature of the red color nodes. The temperature of the red nodes are provided in the form of boundary condition. so this is our two dimensional computational domain along with boundary condition so first we have to divide this domain into number of grid points and then calculate the temperature of the intermediate nodes for this example we have used five nodes for length l and six node for height h hence for this particular example we have delta x which is equal to 2.4 divided by 4 and that is equal to 0.6 likewise delta y is which is equal to 3 divided by 5 and that is also equal to 0.6 hence for this problem we have uniform grid size that is delta x which is equal to delta y before applying finite difference formula let us first number all the nodes in terms of ij so for the bottom end the z coordinate is fixed to 0 and i coordinate vary from 0 to 4 for the left end the i coordinate is fixed to 0 and j coordinate are vary from 0 to 5 and for the right end the i coordinate is fixed to 4 and j coordinate is vary from 0 to 5 and likewise for the top end the j coordinate is fixed to 5 and i coordinate vary according to its position and for the intermediate nodes the numbering is given accordingly So this is the Laplacian equation, which is used to solve steady-state heat conduction in this particular domain. If you recall central difference approximation, then this is the uh, formula for del square t by del x square, and this is the formula for del square t by del y square. For this, for this particular example, we have delta x is equal to delta y, and hence the aforementioned equation can be simplified as shown here. and which can be also rewritten as t of ij which is equal to average of t of i plus 1 comma j plus t of i minus 1 comma j plus t of i comma j plus 1 plus t of i comma j minus 1 from the final formulation of tij we have realized that to calculate temperature of any node we need to have temperature values of four neighboring nodes for example if you talk about this particular node then the temperature of left node and bottom nodes are known because of the given boundary condition however the temperature of right sided node and the top nodes are not known hence in numerical method it is standard practice to start the calculation with some initial guess for the sake of simplicity let us assume temperature of all the intermediate nodes are zero and these are the node numbers which we will used in tij formulation and these are the node number for the boundary nodes so let us start iteration 1 with node 1 comma 1 so once we substitute i equal to 1 and j equal to 1 in this particular equation you will get t of 1 1 is equal to t of 2 1 plus t of 0 1 plus t of 1 2 plus t of 1 0 divided by 4 Now the temperature of T of zero one and T of one zero are known because of the given boundary condition, and the temperature of T two one and T one two will be taken as per the our initial guess. So once we substitute this value in our equation, you will get T of one one is equal to thirty one point twenty five degrees Celsius. Now let us move to the neighboring node that is T of two one. 
by substituting i equal to 2 and j equal to 1 you will get the following expression now the temperature of the bottom node that is t of 2 0 is known because of the given boundary condition whereas the temperature of the remaining three neighboring nodes will be taken as per our initial guess so by substituting these values in our equation you will get t of 2 1 is equal to 12.5 degrees celsius now let us see another sample calculation for node t of 3 1 so by substituting i equal to 3 and j equal to 1 you will get the following expression now the temperature of the right node and bottom nodes are known because of the given boundary condition and the temperature of the top node and left node will be taken as per our initial guess when we put these values in our equation you will get t of 3 1 is equal to 37.5 degrees celsius so we have to repeat this process for all the intermediate nodes and then we will have temperature of all intermediate nodes corresponding to the first iteration so this was the initial guess with which we started our first iteration and at the end these are the temperature distribution after first iteration please note that the actual values will have decimal points but for the sake of simple representation i have used round of values so now the important question is have we reached the final solution what is the criteria to decide this the rule to decide whether we have reached the final solution is to check the numerical error then the subsequent question is which error to answer this let us recall the definition of absolute approximate error the absolute difference between present numerical value and the previous numerical value is called absolute approximate error for example for the present case if you consider node 1 1 which is here then the absolute difference is 31 minus 0 which is equal to 31 likewise for this node 1 2 the absolute approximate error is 12 minus 0 which is equal to 12 thus we will be able to calculate error for all the intermediate nodes okay so what next now we will focus only on maximum approximate error for the present case the maximum error is 100 as shown here this is a huge error right we have to perform more number of iteration till this error reduces to some acceptable limit let us put one criteria that we will repeat this process till the maximum error reduces to 0.001 this limit mainly depends on sensitivity of the problem for very sensitive case we may have to use criteria as 10 to the power minus 12 technically this criteria is known as convergence criteria ok so let's move to the second iteration we know that for all the iteration we'll have to start with some initial guess value so what is the initial temperature for iteration 2 we will use the temperature values obtained at the end of first iteration as the initial guess for the second iteration so let us start iteration 2 with node 1 1 the temperature of the boundary nodes will be the same as given in the problem the only difference is temperature of node 2 1 and node 1 2 will be taken from iteration 1 by using these values you will get t of 1 1 is equal to 39.062 degrees celsius by performing such calculation for all intermediate nodes we will have temperature corresponding to the second iteration so this was the temperature distribution at the end of first iteration and now we have updated temperature of second iteration we will again calculate the absolute approximate error, error for all the intermediate nodes and will focus only on the maximum error for the present case the maximum error is 48 as shown here our aim is to repeat this process until the maximum error reduces to 0.001 you must have realized that it is very tiring and time consuming process to repeat this process on pen and paper so we will solve this using computer code here is the Fortran code where temperature of any node tij is calculated from the temperature of four neighboring nodes i have put convergence criteria as 0.001 i am also curious to know that how many iteration this code will perform to achieve the final results if i run this code then you may see that the code has taken 40 iterations to give the final result so this is the final temperature distribution once convergence criteria is achieved 
Now I want you to first repeat this calculation on pen and paper and try to get the results of iteration 1. This will give you confidence about this method. Now you have to develop your own code. Just to check the initial progress of your code, you can compare your temperature data of iteration 1 with my results. If you are getting some different values, and then try to identify error and try to rectify it. Once your code is developed, then I want you to play with some parameters. Like, take large number of nx and ny and check its effect on number of iteration and temperature values. Then check the number of iteration if you try to take another initial guess instead of zero and check its effect on final temperature and total number of iteration. I want you to realize how your temperature distribution and total number of iteration vary if you lower the convergence criteria to 10 to the power minus 6. Now what modification you will have to perform in your code if I change the left end boundary condition from 75 degrees Celsius to adiabatic boundary condition and finally rewrite your code if delta x is not equal to delta y. So in this lecture we discuss gauss seidel method to solve elliptic equation. In the upcoming lecture we will discuss solution strategy for parabolic equation.